Hey there, how's it going? Um, I always have to wait because I never know when I've actually gone live or not, um, but it turns out I am live, so it's good. Um, I'm Pete Gallagher. Normally I'd, I'd be on my own Twitch stream doing uh, IoT stuff, but uh, it makes a lot of sense for me to come onto the Azurist channel and and uh, drive all our efforts into this this awesome channel. So um, obviously hello to Liam and, and Jonathan that I'd normally be on with as well. Um, but uh, today I'm going to be having a look at uh, this little device. Uh, so this is the new Raspberry Pi Pico, which is um, the first microcontroller Raspberry Pi uh, that the Raspberry Pi Foundation have made. A uh, really cool device. So uh, they've made uh, their own silicon, the RP2040, a uh, tiny little 7 by 7 mil uh, microcontroller. Um, and uh, it's obviously it's just come out today. I actually got mine on the front of uh, Hackspace magazine, uh, which we have here. Um, so if you if you're lucky enough, if you nip down to the news agents, you might find that there's there's still some of those available. I'd be surprised the number of people that uh, have got sad faces on Twitter because uh, they've sold out already. Um, I kind of felt like that when uh, the the Raspberry Pi Zero was was given away on the front of, I think it was the Magpie magazine. Uh, I missed out on that. Um, but yeah, so it's it's quite cool. Um, it's cool that they've they've made their own silicon for this as well. So they've got uh, a lot more control, I guess, over it now. Um, if I switch to um, uh, this this my shared screen here, then this is the the release blog post on the Raspberry Pi website, and there's some information about the device here, including the fact that it's a an RP two o four o down there. Scrolling past. Um, uh, some of these bits of information there's the specs for the device down here um, it's got 264 kilobytes of RAM and that just reminds me of I'm old enough to remember the, the ZX Spectrum and the 128k ZX Spectrum in particular and of course this is a, basically a 256k device so um, that was nice uh, so remember kilobytes yes most certainly do uh, something else that I found interesting was this uh, 16 PWN channels here so um, Obviously, we can drive things like servos with PWM. Um, so imagine the sort of robots that you could make with 16 PWM channels. That's uh, I quite like that idea. And I, I see people making uh, cars and things already, motor drivers and stuff as well. So that's that's going to be pretty cool. I quite like that. And obviously, there's there's a whole heap of other stuff. There's um, TensorFlow um, Light, Peter Warden's um, TensorFlow Light framework. So that's pretty cool. I like that. Um, we we program it either with MicroPython or C or C++. Uh, and I'm going to be looking at MicroPython today, which I don't spend a great deal of time in, funnily enough. I'm um, normally a .NET programmer. Uh, I'm a Microsoft Azure MVP. Uh, so most of my IoT work tends to be in, in the Azure stuff and um, either in Node or in, in, in C Sharp in .NET. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to make sure that, that if there's any chat or anything like that, that... Um, I'm going to cope with that, which is fine. Uh, so that's good. So obviously, yeah, if you've got any any questions, then I'll try and answer them. But I'm I'm new to this too. I've I've just got this today. So uh, I mean, you can see sort of above my head up there, I've got it. Um, the headers soldered on, um, and uh, I've got it put into a little breadboard, and there's a circuit. So what I'm going to run through is this getting started guide uh, with the Raspberry Pi Pico. So this is on the Raspberry Pi website. Um, and I, in fact, I'll paste this uh, link in the chat if it lets me. Uh, okay, I'll do it on here. Uh, oh, I'll put it in in a little minute. Oh, the chat's there. That's fine. You never get everything you want. Uh, hi, Carl. How's it going? Uh, weirdly, um, the chat I've got on my desktop is not working here. So, um, yeah, Hackspace is still offering the free Pi Pico. That's a really good point. So, I mentioned the Hackspace magazine earlier. Um, they've got a really good offer where you can get uh, three issues for 10 quid, which is a bargain, really, because it's such a good magazine. But on top of that, um, there's a link that you can go to that I'll also put in the chat um, that uh, you can get a free um, Raspberry Pi Pico with it. So let me just put that in the chat as well so you can have that. There we go. So yeah, if you hit that link, then yeah, free uh, Raspberry Pi Pico with the with your three issues there. So ten quid for three issues. These are normally six quid each. Those magazines are. So to get a free Raspberry Pi Pico and three issues for ten quid is an absolute bargain. 
uh, so well worth well worth doing so that's cool so um this introduction um you might recognize that so um this circuit here is what i've copied on here whether i've got the led the right way around is another thing i, I can i've been doing electronics for years and years but i still end up having to pick the led out and swap it around the other thing is when i was putting this in it was quite tight to put things in and i noticed that some of them are tight and some of them are loose with these wires so i've got some spares just in case some better better ones um so we'll see see if i can get to the point where i'm flashing this led today um it probably won't be probably won't be a massively long stream uh, but i will just go through all of the things that this uh, introductory material uh, is is calling out so well, it's got what we need here so obviously the raspberry pi pico with the soldered headers um, I'm just going to zoom in just a little bit further just to make sure that um, it's it's okay for people to read. Um, we need a computer and a micro USB cable, which I've got ready, and the other end's plugged into the PC, and I'll plug it into that in a minute. Um, and um, we can search components like a button and LED. I'm only going to do the LED and the resistor today, and then perhaps I'll do uh, some more complicated stuff later. And a breadboard and some some wires, which I've got. And yeah, if we wanted to, we could plug it into an external power source and power it and have it run autonomously. Um, so yeah, we're going to be doing MicroPython uh, using the Funny, and we'll have to put the firmware on there for Micro MicroPython. Um, so I'm not going to go through too much of the what we'll learn, because uh, we'll do that as we go. So yeah, that's that's what the, uh, the Pico looks like uh, in drawing form. And then this is... Um, uh, the assembly process that they've got there so stick it straight in the in the breadboard and then it's actually telling you to plug it in there but then they tell you don't plug the other end in so uh, this is the pin out so you can see um, I'll zoom in a little bit further for that if it lets me uh, oh no that's about as far as it's going to let me zoom in so uh, but yeah a bunch of GPIO like you'd expect on a Pi including uh, I squared C actually there's uh, plenty of I squared C on there uh, which is nice um, in fact, I'm not quite sure why there seems to be some repetition. It looks like they're the same there um, between between those two blocks there. So whether, whether or not you can just assign them, which I guess you can, which is quite cool. So UARTs and things like that, um, and then PWM on a heap of these as well, uh, as well as ADC, which is nice. I mean, one of the benefits of using the microcontroller over something like the Raspberry Pi is that you can do sort of um, more real-time work on it. So... Uh, when you're running the, the the Raspberry Pi, it's it's a it's a full-on computer, and you've got Linux running underneath it, and so timing is going to be up to the operating system at the end of the day. And I know you can you can put bare metal code on a Raspberry Pi, but these microcontrollers are designed for this sort of low-level work, uh, almost like an Arduino. A uh, ten pound for three magazines offers UK only. That's a really good point, actually. Uh, but there is one for twelve um, twelve issues for ninety quid. Uh, that's a really good point. Uh, so yeah, uh, thanks for calling that out, Carl, and thanks for the question. So uh, yeah, uh, there's a debug, little debug, um, few uh, pins on there as well, which um, uh, I'm not entirely sure what it does. Uh, so perhaps it'll get called out at some point, maybe. So installing Thony, which I've not done. So uh, I have got the um, the Thony page open though. So Thony is a really cool Python IDE. Um, so I'm going to download that and get this installed. You can do it. There we go, it's doing it. And I'm going to keep that. Show you more. Keep anyway. And then I can open that. Oh no, well, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to run it from my downloads folder. And do it that way. Oh man, if everybody has to go through this to get it to, to run, it's going to be a bit annoying for people. Um, there is there is nothing wrong with Thonny. Uh, that's just Windows trying to protect us, really. Um, I am going to zoom in a little bit while I'm doing this so you can see what's going on. Uh, install this. Yeah, I'm going to create a desktop icon. Let's do that. I'm glad this isn't going to take an hour to install, otherwise it'd be a very boring stream. <laughs> so yeah, um, obviously you can for for going and buying the um, 
uh, the Pico then if you're a UK person then the Pie Hut or Pie Maroney or uh, any of those sorts of places they've got they had stock first thing this morning I've not looked uh, to see if they've still got stock um, oh good I'm, I don't know if my stream went a bit funny then it looked like in uh, um, in in the stream there. I don't know if it went a bit odd but anyway do do shout out if if I'm stopping and starting or something like that um, oh zoom in it's uh, zoom it is what I'm using. Uh, that's a free little tool. Um, I'll show you. Zoom it. Okay. So you just run it and then there's um, shortcuts. You can do control uh, and four or zoom in and keep the screen alive. Or if you don't want to keep the screen alive, you can do control plus one. And I think you can also um, draw on the screen as well, which uh, I really must look up how you do that. So I guess that must be funny installed and it is. So that's good. And again, call out if if something's too small on the screen, or or you or I've not understood something properly, then then shout at me in the chat, and I'll try and uh, I'll try and uh, go uh, circle back and sort something out for that. So um, that should be fully installed. So I'm just going to power that up. Come over here. So it's asking me some settings to get that installed. Um, I doubt very much there's anything I need to do. I just click Let's Go. And there's funny. So I'm hoping that I can uh, zoom in on this. I'm not. Just have a look. Uh, oh, I can um, control and plus for the font size. Uh, it said it said it was. Well, why isn't that working then? Control and plus is not control and plusing. Ah, well, the, the mouse wheel will work as well. So. That should be that should be good enough. Obviously, you're not going to be able to see these these here very easily, but um, I can zoom into that in a little minute. Right, so let's let's carry on. What's it say we need to do now? Uh, we can use Thony to write standard Python code, and we can type this into the main window. So let's do that. Let's just follow these instructions and make sure it's working. Uh, so type the following into the main window, then click the Run button, uh, which is there. And we're going to need to save it, so I'm going to put that in my downloads directory for now. Funny one. Hello world. Well, good. Well, funny's working then, so I'm happy enough with that. Uh, next, we can connect the Raspberry Pi Pico, which is the part we're really here to see. Uh, so if have never used MicroPython, then we need to add the MicroPython firmware. So we need to do that. So we need to find the boot select button on the Raspberry Pi and press the boot select button and hold it while we connect the other end of the micro USB cable to the computer. So um, I think you should be able to see that in the image above my head. That should be okay. So I'll try that. So that's the um, the boot select button there. I'm hoping that this, the Twitch stream will sort of catch up, but um, I'm going to press and hold that with one hand and then plug this in with the other. If I can get it to go in. I heard the Windows Chime, and so I've got a device now, but Decolon uh, has appeared, which is good, puts it into USB mass storage device mode, and in the bottom right hand corner of the Thony window, we should see the version of Python we're running, so zoom in and go down there, so 3.7.9, it wants us to click that, and then we need this one, MicroPython Raspberry Pi Pico, I click on that, and then here it's going to want us to install the firmware, so let's do that. Oh, let's just move across a bit. Should be able to see that. I bet you've missed that um, extra piece that was going on there because I've zoomed in. Um, done, it says. Uh, so yeah, plug in the Pico with that boot cell and click install and then that's it. So that should be done. So I can come out of that. And switch back. What's next? So we did that, and then we did the dialog box. Uh, you don't need to update the firmware every time, which is good. Uh, next time, you can just plug it into your computer without pressing the boot cell button. So it's not told us that we need to unplug it or anything to get this to work, so that should be okay. And the next step, you use Thony to run some simple Python uh, code on our Raspberry Pi. Uh, so that should have... Um, MicroPython is indeed 
selected down there. So actually, it's, it's right behind me. So that's a bit awkward. There we go. I move it across. <laughs> uh, there. So this is the the menu that I clicked on earlier. Um, apologies, that was right behind me. Um, and so look, we've got some options in there. In fact, uh, what I spotted earlier was these two. So ESP32 and 8266. So they're, they're two Arduino boards uh, that come with Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth in the case of the ESP32. So I really must have a go at, at MicroPython on, on those two devices. Uh, I've done plenty of C work uh, on them, but I've never tried Python on them. So I quite like that. That's quite cool. So... Um, We've got to look at the shell at the bottom. We should see something like what we can see. Yeah, there we are. So that's that. All right, there we can see that Raspberry Pi Pico with the RP2040 uh, device on board. So, uh, by the way, I mean, uh, Pi Moroni are making a whole heap of uh, devices based on this as well. So that's going to be dead cool. A little gaming device and there's a, an audio hat and uh, there's breakout board type things. And they're making some awesome kit. So do go and check Pi Moroni website out and... And check that out. That's uh, yeah. I had a look earlier, and they wanted to buy all the things. Uh, now we can type commands directly into the shell. So type the following command and hit the enter key to see the output. So I should be able to do this. And we got hello. That was fast as well. So um, that that round loop that it's going around. Actually, there's some round loop because I've got a, a monitor here with a USB hub built into it, and then another USB hub plugged into that, and then this plugged into that. So yeah, there is there is a round loop to go there as well. So that's cool. That one works. Uh, My MicroPython adds hardware-specific modules, such as machine, that we can use to program the Raspberry Pi. So we're going to create a pin, and what we're going to do here is turn the onboard LED. So there's a little tiny LED up, um, up around here. Um, so we can turn that on and off. So we can do this first. Import a pin. And then we can set that. This pin 25 must be the, the the address for that particular pin, the pin number for that pin. And then we should be able to set it to on. And I can actually see that. So if I just go to this screen, then you should be able to see up near the, um, uh, the USB there that that is actually on now. So I like that. Everything is working, so that's good. <laughs> Aside from the palaver of trying to get Thonny to install, uh, everything actually seems to be working, which is nice. So I uh, should see the LED light up. So we can actually turn it back off again. So I'm going to switch back to the phone and me and then turn this back off while... There we are. So you can see that um, going on and off just by flicking between those two things. So that seems to work quite nicely. I like that. Uh, good. So, what's next? If you want to write a longer program, it's best to save it in a file. So, uh, using the shell is great, but in this step, we're going to create an actual program to blink the LED on and off in a loop. So, we're going to enter the following code into the main, uh, into here. So, that's fine. And then we can click the run button. I've already saved it, so it should just save itself to where it was and run that. And that looks like that just went once. So, uh, just looking at the Pimeroni website, just saw this. Wonder how long before someone makes a Stream Deck clone with that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, that's true. I mean, the, the, the uh, Carl's talking about that Elgato device, and what I've got set up down here is just a tab, and I've got uh, an OBS remote app running on that. But it's nowhere near as good as one of those Stream Decks. That is what you're talking about, I think, isn't it, Carl? Uh, the 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 cool thing about those stream decks is that they've got little screens in them, tiny little OLEDs. Um, so buying a bunch of those would be high on my list of things to do. Uh, so I'd quite like that. So I don't see this. I mean, what, what am I doing here? Let's just stop this code. Oh. Oh, well, it's not going to... All it's doing is going to run once. It's not a loop yet. Um, so click run. Actually... Click the run button. Funny will ask you whether you want to save the file. Oh, we'll see. Because I've already saved it, then we didn't get that window as well. So I wonder, can I do new and try it in there, see what that window looks like? Oh, there we are. So I can either run it on this computer or on the Raspberry Pi Pico. So that makes sense. Um, so if I click Raspberry Pi Pico. Oh, now what's it saying? Uh, we can save it to the Raspberry Pi Pico. 
Uh, enter blink.py as the file name, so let's do that. Blink.py and press OK. So we did that. Now what? Lots of flicking around between these two things. If I need to save your, your program to the Raspberry Pi Pico and run it, you should see the onboard LED switch between on and off each time you press the run button. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of what we saw, isn't it? So if I keep pressing that run button uh, and we switch back to this sort of screen, then we should see, there we are. That's the LED turning on and off every time I hit run. Uh, but got, I think what they're going to do next is what I'm going to say. That's not very uh, uh, automatic, is it? So uh, I'll switch back here. But we can use a timer module to set a timer that runs the function at regular intervals. Brilliant. So we can update the code to look like this. So we're going to add this timer in there. And then when the timer goes off, uh, it's going to uh, hit this toggle. And we're going to set that to 2.5, which I believe is probably going to be seconds. Uh, so every two and a half seconds, it's going to blink the, the LED on and then off. So let's do that. Update that. And then run it. That's not two and a half seconds then. That must be something else. That 2.5, because it doesn't look like it's 250 milliseconds either. So um, there you go. You can see the LED flashing on and off now. So, I mean, this is this is dead dead cool. I mean, what's great about this is that I kind of always wanted a, an LED on a regular Raspberry Pi for this exact sort of stuff. And I think I actually asked Eben Upton when I went to one of the, the birthday parties why we didn't have an LED. And he quite rightly said, of course, you stick an LED on there, then you're going to use the GPIO pin up. And somebody's going to be annoyed because uh, they might want that extra GPIO pin. So um, the fact that we've got an onboard LED there must just mean the fact that they wanted to keep this so small that there wasn't space for that extra GPIO pin to get um, uh, pushed out to the edge. So they've just left it as an LED, which I like. I think it's really good because... Now, you don't need uh, uh, to solder pins onto this. You don't need to put it in a breadboard, plug anything in to actually get it to the point where you know that it's working, uh, which is really accessible. I like that because not everybody's got a soldering iron, apart from anything. Um, I'm, I'm willing to bet that just like the Raspberry Pi Zero, we're going to get a Raspberry Pi Zero WH with the, the, the headers. So you, we're going to get a, a Pico H, I guess, with the headers already sol soldered on. That will probably <laughs> come sometime next week, I guess. So, uh, yeah, that's good. I like that. So what does it want us to do next? Um, we can use the digital inputs and outputs. Perfect. So the circuit we've got wired up, whether it's correct or not, we'll find out in a minute. Uh, so this is just showing us what we've done. So um, from the pin out that we had before, this, uh, this pin down here where my uh, mouse cursor is, um, and I really should learn how to do the, the drawing and zoom it, um, that's going to be ground. And this rail across the top, the blue rail that you can see there, that is um, the, all connected together. So that kind of signif uh, signifies that what that yellow is all the way across there. So we're bringing a wire out there, connecting one side of the LED, and the other side of the LED is connected through this resistor to this GPIO. I think it's GPIO 15 down there. Um, it's a really simple circuit. Um, you know, you know, the current's going to come out of that pin and then sink down into that ground. So um, that's going to be quite cool. Uh, El uh, yeah, Elgato Stream Deck is sold out everywhere. Um, I did have a look and I think at one point it wasn't and it was relatively uh, cheap and not that long ago, actually. Um, so somebody would make a killing if they decided they were going to make some sort of a knockoff for that. Actually, it's not that hard. All you need to do is, uh, uh, is configure the, uh, the keyboard shortcuts um, in OBS and then you could have a device not not too dissimilar to this but I think maybe a Raspberry Pi Zero would be better that can act as a USB HID device um, and then you hook your screens up to it and it just does key presses for you um, so I did think about doing it but oh man I've got a lot of work to do so <laughs> uh, so yeah so that was cool so in this example we've got the LED connected to pin 15 so that's right if you use a different pin remember to look at the pin number so that's fine so we can use the same code as we did to blink the onboard LED, but we can change that pin to 15. So I don't need to copy all of that. I can just change this to 15. And then we can try running it. And it looks like my uh, either I've not got it on 15, or my wiring's not quite right, or my LED's in the wrong way around. Which do you think it is? So I'm going to pull that LED out, 
and flick it around. And I heard my computer bing when I did that. So I don't know if I uh, accidentally unplugged it when I did that. So that's interesting. Now when I'm, I'm plugging it in, I'm getting um, like it, it's plugging in and then immediately going off again. So let's just try that again. Interesting. It looks like it's it should be connected okay. I'm not getting the run up here as well. I don't know if you can see if I zoom in, the run has disappeared. So it's like it doesn't know it's there. So I am just gonna try closing Thony back and terminate. You stop restart to restart. So how do you do that? Ah, stop restart back end this. This button here. Ah, now I've got a plus, a uh, play again. Check the connection, making sure the device is not in bootloader mode. I'll choose configure interpreter. Hmm, interesting. I'm going to I'm going to close this. I'm going to disconnect my um, uh, device again and plug it back in again. It would be um, slightly sad if I'd broken it at this point. Let's try funny again and see um, where we get to. Check the connection. So. Hmm, interesting. Uh, what can I say? I mean, unplugging that LED while while it's on really won't make any difference whatsoever. So I can't see why that would have would have upset it. I'm going to try plugging it in in bootloader mode again. Yeah, I'm getting nothing on there. I wonder if it's something in the device manager that's causing it. And I mean, that's why we do these things live. Let's have a look. See if maybe there's a driver that it doesn't like somewhere. Uh, dun, 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 devices. Devices and printers. Uh -uh. Device manager. And again, apologies for this, but uh, ah, so we've got an unknown USB device here. So I'm going to uninstall it. And let's see if if that fixes the problem. So that was that was in this area here. I had an unknown device. So it's going to try unplugging it again now. Plugging it back in. So I'm not hearing a that that magical bing at this point uh we've done that with uh Ob oh hi girls it's coding how's it going nice to see you if you don't know who girls are and um girls into coding are then go and have a look on the internet they're a fantastic organization uh go go look them up uh, and in fact um let me let me see if i can do it this way not Let me paste a link to their website in the chat. There, go and support them however you can. Uh, yeah, we'll use VS um, ISO funny. Hi, Helen. How's it going? Yeah, definitely do. Um, so I'm hoping that I've not broken my my uh, device. So I'm going to try plugging it into a different port. I've got to be careful because oddly. Um, some of these USB connections are a little bit dicky as well. Still not hearing any bings. I'm going to plug it directly into my surface.
I don't know uh, if you can still hear me. My webcam has decided that it's going to um, uh, go on the fritz and stop working entirely. So um, you can't probably can't see me. I'm just going to be stuck there for a little bit. So apologies for that. But let me just see if I can plug this directly into my um, machine and see if I can get that working again. You don't need to see me to understand this. It's fine. Oh, I heard it. So I think it's the... Um, uh, I think it was just the device it didn't like for some reason. So, all right, well, that was a little glitch. And again, my webcam's decided that it's going to stop. So I'm not entirely sure what um, what its problem is there. Um, I'll quickly just try this. So, right, I'm going to paste this code in. And do 15 here. And then I'm going to click the Run button. And then we can click this Raspberry Pi Pico again, hopefully. And we still don't have an LED flashing, which is not ideal. Definitely pin 15 that I've got everything connected to. It is possible it's these wires. Um, so let me just switch these wires about, just in case it's that. So some different wires here. So it looks like it's uh, OBS that's decided to give up on my uh, camera. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I don't know if I can even change that while I'm streaming. Probably not. Uh... Oh, yeah, I can. I can. There's, there's my other camera. It's like behind the scenes, that is. Oh, good. Now I'm back. That wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be to do that. So I'm just going to unplug these wires that I've got plugged in here because it could be that they're not very good. I want pin three on there, which is the ground pin. I'll plug this one in there. And obviously, if anybody can see something that I'm doing incorrectly, then do let me know. Because that should be running now and, and blinking. And in fact, I'm probably going to switch it back to... Um, uh, to pin 15 again just to make sure that it's actually running oh well it isn't because look uh oh good i'm glad you can hear me still um because i've not saved it so i need to save it i'm going to save it as blink 2. ah oh, look, look, look look it's flashing can, uh, is that working up there um I'm hoping it is. In the Twitch stream, it seems to be a bit delayed, so I'm hoping... Yeah, it is! Well, hey! There we are. Sorry about all of the messing around then, but... Yeah, maybe um, maybe that's something to bear in mind. I mean, hopefully I've not broken something over on my uh, USBs over there, but... Um, uh, probably just something to bear in mind. Probably don't plug stuff in while it's plugged into your computer. <laughs> Uh, I mean, that's, I guess, the benefit of plugging it into a USB hub is that, you know, if you if you blow a USB hub up, up, buy another one for 15 quid or something, not ideal, but way cheaper than buying a whole new laptop or a new Raspberry Pi. Uh, and by the way, I mean, I'm doing this all on a streaming um, setup here, so way more powerful than you need. You can do this all on your Raspberry Pi, and I mean, a Raspberry Pi 400 would be ideal for, for doing this sort of stuff, so... Um, I do love that. It's funny, of course. It comes pre-installed on, on Ras Raspberry Pi OS. So, um, yeah, that's cool. So, that's good. Um, and being as I'm here, I might as well carry on. Let's have a look. What else can we do? We can add a button. Um, I might go and get a button and just see what it does. I've got loads of those. So, one sec. Hello. I've got a button. Uh, I don't know how easy that'll be to see, but these tiny little micro switch buttons, which is kind of what they've got on there. So um, it might be the best idea then if I, I wonder, do I need to click stop in Thony or anything or if it'll just, uh, well, there is stop, uh, but I don't know what that's going to do. I'm just going to unplug it and see what it does. So there's that. Uh, I'm going to click that stop as well anyway. So if I 
plug this button in across. So the button's going to go across these two, this barrier here. So you've got um, a, a line down the middle and it's not great with my finger in the way. I'm just going to plug it in and then explain. Uh, so if I switch to this, you'll be able to see it a little bit better. So I've, I've just plugged this little micro switch button in there across the middle. Um, and so that will uh, let us have a play with that. More wires for this. So switch back to this. Let's have a look what it actually says. So we're going to... Oh, okay. So they're going to use that rail there and and that oh, okay so we've got plus so that must be five or uh, three three volts that they've got there so let's do that one so that's here and that is on pin one two three four yeah definitely pin five so that's gonna be that's three already four five now uh, obviously be careful when you do this because there are two different rails uh they're actually inverted if you can see on there so I'm going to plug that one in there. So that must be three volts going there. So we're going to be pulling uh, the button up high to begin with. And then I've actually not got a resistor on the other side. So that's fine. And then the other side is going to go to the pin next to... I don't need to do this one. Like this in there. Uh, more wires. Lots of wires. It's all good. Live electronics assembly. Uh, that's going to go in there. So that should be the button stuff. So if I plug this back in again. Good. I did hear the ding did a dink happen. So that was good. Let's see if Thonny's um, done anything. Well, the run button's appeared back again. So it does, know, it does seem to know what it's doing. So that's good. Uh, so we'd have added a button just like it said and the button is on pin 14 and it's connected to the 3 volt 3 pin on the Raspberry Pi So that, that's what we thought and this means that when you set the pin you can tell MicroPython that it's an input and This pin needs to be pulled down. So create a new file and copy this code in So you can do control and N for new So uh, we're going to do the same thing where we're going to grab a pin and we're going to use this time so that we can do this time dot sleep and just wait for I guess half a second there but if the button uh if the button dot value so if, if the button has got a value in other words if if it's high i guess then uh we'll toggle the led and then wait so it looks like if i'm just holding the button down it's going to be toggling the led when you code then press the button the led should toggle on or off if you hold the button down it will flash yeah so that's exactly what i thought it would do oh i can't get to thonny oh oh interesting the screen went black there. Looks like it's still okay. So, all right. So let's run that. I'm going to run on the Raspberry Pi Pico. And uh, what did they want us to call it? Oh, it doesn't say. I'm going to call it button. Okay. Oh, unindent does not match. I think it's complaining about this look. So... But there's nothing wrong with that. So must maybe there's some white space there. Let's try that again. Right. Oh, that's interesting because it's still flashing the LED, which it shouldn't be. I don't think I've done anything funny there. So it looks like it thinks it's still connected down. Ah, that's because I had it the wrong way around. Don't know if, if you if you saw what I actually did there. Um, I moved my that black wire across to the other side of the button. Um, so that's all I needed to do. So uh, I'll try not to get my hand in the way while I do this. So if I press the button, then it's flashing, and we can press it once and it'll toggle it. So that's quite cool. I like that. That was quite easy as well. Um, obviously, I took the precaution of unplugging it and everything before I. I plugged anything in, so I'm not quite sure what I did uh, there. And again, I'm, I'm hoping I'm not blowing my USB hub up. I was quite attached to that USB hub. Uh, control the LED brightness with PWM. Okay, you might as well do that. I, I'm, I'm going to carry on and probably till um, 
about half past five and then then I'll give up and everybody can go and have their their dinner at that point or obviously do feel free to to, to sign off and you'll be able to catch up on the on the stream at a later point and it'll get uploaded to YouTube as well so that's all good uh, so pulse width modulation so pulse width modulation it's kind of as it says so you've got a, a little pulse and it'll start at a low level and go up to a high level all the other way around and what you can do is vary the width of that pulse um, and sort of the, the longer it's on essentially if you're doing the brightness of an LED then the brighter the LED is going to be because what you're going to be doing is really really fast turning the LED on and off so um, that's what looks like we're going to do here so we're in the same circuit as the last step and we've got a new file so yeah it looks like it to see these I, I guess that's funny telling us that it doesn't like that indenting so I'm not quite sure what is wrong with that code but that's probably something that that should get fed back maybe is that they might have some white space in there that they don't um that you can't see um so anyway um we're we're now importing pwm here at the top um, and we're creating a pwm from pin 15 pwm pin on pin 15 which is our led pin um it's kind of dropping off the top there a little bit isn't it uh, and then we're going to set the frequency to a thousand um and then uh, which I'm guessing maybe that's a thousand hertz, um, a kilohertz maybe or something, or not not sure. We need to look that up and see what that actually does. And then a duty cycle here as well. Um, so that's that's the the relationship between how long it's on and off. I think actually. Um, so you've got like a pulse width and an entire on and off section, um, and that would be that thousand. But then how long it's on would be the duty cycle, I think. Or it might be the other way around. Uh, obviously, feel free to, to correct me. Uh, we're waiting for our Pika to arrive, um, Helen says. So, yeah, uh, I've, my mate uh, Cliff Aegis, uh, he's awesome. He's an airline pilot, but he also, you know, in his, in his spare time almost builds uh, robotic hands for children and uh, just a really, really cool guy. Uh, but yeah, I went down to W. H. Smith's first thing this morning and picked this magazine up with the with the Pico on it, and uh, he's he's got the subscription, uh, so he's still waiting for the postman to bring it to him. I don't know if it'll have arrived yet or anything, but uh, uh, hopefully yours will arrive soon. Um, uh, but I, I did order some from uh, the Pie Hut as well, um, so um, uh, that's that's quite cool. So yeah, so we've got um, some code. Uh, so let's save that and we'll run it on the Raspberry Pi again. Device is busy. Ah, okay, so it looks like maybe do I need to stop this code? Is that what I need to do to make that happen? And let's try that again. Okay, uh, maybe it is then. So call this one PWM. Um, and it doesn't look like the LED is actually doing very much which you can see it on on my image there so let's just have a read what's it say see the led pulse bright and dim in a continuous cycle well we don't let's just try this that might be the problem ah there we go oh look at that how cool is that the power of pwm and uh, and uh as far as i'm aware this is how you know those dimmer switches work on um uh, on your wall there but of course they don't often work with led lights so back before we had um uh, these low power lights when we had regular light bulbs then you would do a very similar thing where you'd essentially turn them on and off which is the buzz you can hear in those switches so uh so that's cool so i like that so yeah we've got about 15 minutes left so we might as well see what's next we can control ah well we might not get this far because i don't think i've got um the part that we're going to need for this actually it's explaining what this pwm is here so uh, the frequency pwm frequency tells the raspberry pi how often to switch the power between off and on and the duty cycle tells the led for how long it should be on each time okay so i was right uh but you know 50 50 chance uh, so for the raspberry pi pico micro python this can range from zero to six five oh two five uh where that would be 100 percent of the time so the led would just stay bright and a value of around 32,512 uh, would be that it would be on for half the time. Have a play with the PWM frequency and the duty cycle values. So we could certainly do that. Yeah, pulse width modulation, absolutely. 
So, yes, quite right. Um, thank you for, for pointing that out. Uh, so let's have a look at what this page says anyway. Um, so I don't think I've got one of those hanging around. Let, let me go and have a quick look in my cupboard. No, sadly not. Uh, so, yeah, but we can have a look at what it would have done, yeah? <laughs> Here's what you could have won. Um, so it's going to read the resistance of the potentiometer, and then you can turn the potentiometer and, and see the maximum and minimum values. So it's going to print it out with that with that line there onto the console. So we would have been able to see that. Um, so, uh, yeah, that would have been cool to be able to try that. So I must go and buy myself some... Um, uh, some little uh, potentiometers. Uh, I'm, I'm sure I've got one hanging around somewhere, but no one wants to to watch me search around in drawers full of stuff trying to find potentiometers. Uh, I've got some big ones, but um, they're not, they're not going to work. Power your Raspberry Pi Pico. So you can actually, so what's it say here? So if you want to run your Raspberry Pi Pico without it being attached to the computer, you need a USB power supply, which I have. I've actually got uh, the phone that is providing the camera Oh, tell you what, you probably can't see um, what I'm talking about. So, um, yeah, that would help, wouldn't it? Uh, use the slider potentiometer quite. Yeah, that would have been cool. Um, there's some cool stuff that you could do with this, actually. Uh, but, yeah, I've got this um, little battery pack here. So we can actually power it from that if we wanted to, I guess. To automatically run a MicroPython program, simply save it to the device with the name main.py. Okay, then. So if funny. Save as when prompted for MicroPython device, like the pop-up menu. So let's try that then for this one. File, save as. Raspberry Pi Pico. Devices bar. So, and not, doesn't that, don't, does it actually say that anywhere in these instructions that you must remember to stop your code? Uh, I suppose, you know, kind of goes without saying to a degree, but. Okay, uh, so we should be able to save it as main. Press OK. So it saved it. You can now disconnect the Raspberry Pi Pico from your computer and use a micro USB cable. So let's do that. So plug this power supply in that I've got here. I don't see that running personally. In fact, it is possible that it's such a a low power device that my battery pack can't even see it <laughs> which is entirely possible um what i'll do though is i'm going to plug it into what we should I plug ah i'm going to try plugging it into my printer my printer has got a usb socket so let's see what that does well the printer knows that i've plugged it in but it's not running so that sort of tells me that I've done something wrong. Right? It's not the button that is, is doing something there. So, right, let me unplug that again and plug it back into my PC and see if I did something wrong. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, so, let's just try saving that again. Oh, press this. Raspberry Pi Pico. Mains. I did do it. Or maybe... Ah, that's why. It doesn't automatically add the .py afterwards. So if I do that... I kind of half expected that to automatically start, though. But I think that's the correct thing that I've done. So I've disconnected that. Let's try my power supply again now. Oh, there we go. So that's it running there without uh, the PC. So I just needed to remember the, the .py part. I'm kind of so used to saving in these uh, environments and it adding the necessary extension on the end. So um, so that was cool. So yeah, what next? Uh, loads of stuff. Lo yeah, 
Try out a few more components with the Raspberry Pi Pico, a buzzer, a light dependent resistor, or even a motor controller. Yeah, absolutely. There are people on Twitter that have already started doing that. So, And there is some more documentation here. Uh, and there is, in fact. So uh, there's a getting started here for C++, which I might do at a later date. Um, and the, yeah, here's the, the board specifications that we saw before and that pinout. So yeah, I mean, I like that. That was really easy to get going with and uh, I like that onboard LED. Um, I, I don't like the fact that it, it stopped working at one point, so I'm not quite sure what caused that, but that could quite easily just be uh, my USB hub. Maybe it didn't like me me fettling with uh, some of this stuff there without my, um, without with it being plugged into the computer still. That's possible. I'm not entirely sure what it was going on about there, but never mind. Um, so, yeah, so thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I hope you sort of enjoyed that and um yeah if you've got one on order and it's coming then uh then good luck with that and uh, make sure to, to to tweet out and let us all know how you got on with it and uh any time at all uh helen thank you it's uh it was good of you to tune in um so yeah i'll uh i'll be uploading this to youtube as well so no doubt that'll get shared out at some point but yeah thank you again and uh see you all soon cheers <laughs>